Welcome again. Yeah. Nice to see you. Sort of program, etc. All right. And by the way, good luck on this one. I'm thank not you talking very about the interview, I'm talking about the, the fight for the 100 million in general. I know, thank you very much. <coughs> thank you. Bienvenidos nuevamente a temas y debates, esta vez con el presidente de los Estados Unidos, el señor Ronald Reagan. Mr. President, thank you once again for agreeing to be with us in, in temas y debates. Bienvenido. Well, I'm honored to have been asked. Sir, um, you really do have a reputation for being a fighter that is used to winning his fights, and also for being a president, perhaps the most ideological of the presidents of, of the later years. And in this respect, I'd like to ask you two questions. First, right. how do you assess your chances for winning this fight for the 100 million? And secondly, how would you characterize those members of Congress that oppose you in this one? Well, let me just say this. So I tend to be optimistic at times. I I couldn't tell you what the vote count is. I've been doing my best to persuade uh, members of both houses to support us in this matter, but I'm afraid I'll have to wait till the vote comes in to know how well we're going to do. Now as to your second uh, question, how would I characterize those who are against us? I don't fault their motives and I'm not going to uh, impugn their characters in, in any way. I do find it difficult to understand how they are unable to see the issue as clear-cut as it is. That they're, if they had an alternative and we were arguing about which is the best way to bring about the good result, the result of democracy in Nicaragua, well then this I could understand. But I think it is so clear-cut that if we do not come to the aid of the Contras and give them a chance to uh, force negotiations on the present government, then Nicaragua remains a totalitarian communist state with all the repression and all of the threat to their neighbors that that means. Now, sir, it seems that you have an uphill battle, not precisely in Congress only, but also in the nation, the latest ABC Washington Poll, um, uh, Washington Post poll indicates that about a 60 percent of our citizenry is opposed to a to the contrast. Why do you think this is so, and what can you tell those who are still oppose it? I think there are two reasons. I think one is there's a characteristic of many people there. Uh, it seems far away, and uh, right now here we are with our own problems and the problems of the great deficit and so forth in our in our budget and they uh, there are people that say shouldn't we be dealing with our problems at home what are we doing off there someplace that could be one but I think what has really created the bulk of this feeling is a very sophisticated disinformation program bought and paid for by the Sandinista government they have professional lobbyists hired here in America that are dealing with the Congress. But more than that, uh, they have waged a, a disinformation campaign that reaches our people to where the people don't quite understand what's going on. For example, uh, the people that say, well, what are we doing trying to overthrow a legitimate government? Well, what is legitimate about a government that was a part of a revolution against the dictatorship, as they called it, of Somoza. And the goals of that revolution were publicly announced as bringing democracy to Nicaragua, a pluralistic political system, a freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of religion, all the things that go with democracy. And then that one faction, the Sandinista organization, betrayed their fellow revolutionaries got rid of them, exiled them, drove them out, and took over, as I say, in a totalitarian communist government, which was evidently their original goal. Now, sir, uh, you talked about a disinformation campaign. There are those that fault the administration for not having given enough evidence of this disinformation campaign and for not having given enough evidence of Sandinista intervention in the support of the Salvadoran insurgency. 
why haven't we, why hasn't the administration given more of this concrete material evidence? We have. We have difficulty with our media that for some reason or other, well, I'll give you an example of yesterday. Yesterday I appeared over at the State Department before the entire press, and there were three other gentlemen there, all three from Central America. Two of them had been members of, well, one, a member of the Sandinista government. The other one had been a member of the communist guerrillas, supported guerrillas who were active in El Salvador. Both of them had turned, uh, because of their uh, repugnance for what they had seen and what was going on, and they had come over to the other side, to democracy. The third one was from uh, Nicaragua. He had been imprisoned by this Sandinista government. He showed us his hands where they had torn out his fingernails uh, as part of the torture while he was in prison. All three of these gentlemen spoke, spoke yesterday. And I said a few words myself. Last night on television, on all of the news, I saw myself speaking about one sentence of my remarks. Nothing was said of these three men. And one of those men, the one who had been a part of the Sandinista government before he turned on them, he spoke of the disinformation program. Now, the other day also, I saw a magazine. First time I'd ever seen this, a slick paper magazine. It's called the Nicaraguan, let me see, the Nicaraguan Information Foundation. And they're having it published here in America. They're promoting people to subscribe to this magazine for congressmen and senators and then to have it so that it will be sent to their congressmen and senators. It's a very fine job of propaganda, but it is false propaganda about what is at stake in Nicaragua. Is the press playing into the hands of the Sandinistas? Well, for whatever reason, it seems to be difficult, this is why I'm going on television myself, to speak directly to the people because uh, I said it yesterday at the State Department, these things, but then they're not carried in the news. Sir, with regards to the request for the 100 million per se, there are those who assure us that 100 million will not be enough. And reports come from your interview with the Baltimore Press that um, you would be ready to request more beyond those 100 million if it would be necessary. Are you really uh, in a position now to assert that you're willing to ask for more if it will be needed? And do you think that more will be needed? I, I have to go by what the leaders have told us there, the, uh, the United Democratic uh, Force leaders that were up here recently, um, Robello and uh, Cruz, Arturo Cruz and... Uh, Calero. Calero. Uh, they seem to think that this will, uh, this will be for about a year and a half, this fund. And they seem to think that in a year and a half, uh, the goal can be achieved. You have to remember, with regard to the size of the fighting force, uh, even though that amount of money uh, doesn't sound too tremendous, you have to realize how much can be used by the limited forces. Uh, or would it just be sitting there waiting until it was needed. We believe that it is sufficient to provide them weapons they need, first of all, to arm fully their own ranks, but also to provide defensive weapons against the Soviet helicopters, the gunships that have been delivered uh, to the Sandinista government, and against which right now the Contras have no defense, also anti-tank missiles and so forth. So it may not sound like much when you think of an overall uh, thing like engagements between mm -hmm. armed forces, but uh, yes, I think it is all that they could possibly uh, use. But is it fair to say that this will be only a beginning and that in the long run America should be ready to provide more of a backbone support to them? I think that if the whole purpose of this is to allow the Contras to put the pressure on the Sandinista government, not to come in in a civil war and s overthrow them and drive them out, what their goal has been from the beginning is that they too want a political settlement. They want to put enough pressure on that the Sandinistas will have to negotiate with them 
and come back to what were the original goals of the uh, revolution against Somoza, and that is how to have a democratic government in which the people of Nicaragua will choose the government they want. So two questions come to my mind in this respect. One of them with regards to Contadora. There are those, particularly in the Contadora countries, that assure us that your two-track policy of support for Contadora and support for the Contras is tantamount to pulling the rug from under the Contadora process. How do you reply to that? Well, there are many also who don't say that. Uh, now, I can understand why there are reasons that um, some, with the threat of Nicaragua there, uh, do not go public in some of the things that they say to us. But the Contadoras know that we support them and that we feel that they are a part of what we're trying to do. But so far, they have not been able to put the kind of pressure on a communist government that would make it willing to negotiate uh, with an eye toward becoming more democratic. Can you name one communist country in the world that has ever on its own decided to negotiate with someone about becoming more democratic? You have to have the diplomacy must be backed by a threat, by force. And this is what the Contras are willing to do. And the Contras have assured us that they are willing to lay down their arms at the first time that the Sandinistas will agree to meet with them and to work out a negotiated settlement. And with regards to that, sir, um, a report from the House Intelligence Committee casts doubt on the military capabilities of the Contras. They say that the Contras will never be able to achieve their goals or objectives unless they are supported by U.S. military personnel. In this respect, is the U.S. ready and prepared to send military advisors to train the Contras? And how do you assess the military capacity, capability of the Contras? Oh, we want to, part of this present deal, we want to be able to offer that kind of help of, of um, uh, exchange of intelligence information, uh, whatever proposals or suggestions with regard to training or anything that we could do, but not to send our fighting men down there to do it. And as a matter of fact, the Contras have made it very plain. They have the manpower. They need the tools and the weapons. They do not, they have not asked us, nor are we considering at all. I have to say that in view of the past history, when we some years ago were seen as the big colossus of the North coming down and imposing our will on smaller countries in Latin America, uh, I am sure that there are no Latin American countries that ever want to return to us sending American troops. But and trainers I have no intention and advisors? Of doing it. What? Trainers and advisors. Well, I don't know what extent of that. I believe that, I believe that there are people that we could be of, of help to them in, uh, let's say, discussing strategy or something. And uh, things of this kind we're, we're willing to do. But these are only the things that, that they want. The goal is the people of Nicaragua must have the right to determine the form of government they want. And the Contras, this is what they are trying to bring about. And so we will support with the help that we can support the Contra process. But uh, no, we have no intention. And to those people also, the first part of your, uh, the preface to your question about that the committee in the Congress that said that the Contras uh, can't be the force they need to be. I would remind you that the Contras were being very successful against the Sandinistas until our Congress shut off aid in 1984. And then as uh, they ran out of the tools that they need and the weapons and the, and the uh, ammunition, why their ranks shrank. There are only about 6,000 of the Contras that are now actually engaged, but there is a potential 25,000, but the others don't have the equipment or the weapons. That's what this money is for. Now, with that original force, I think they can. Remember that the, there's every evidence that the Sandinista government does not have the loyal support of the people. Many of the Contras are deserters from the Sandinista army. We know that there are families that are getting their sons out of the country rather than become conscripts drafted into the Sandinista force. So the Sandinistas have 
don't have a great emotional, loyal support of the people. They have an unhappy people for the most part. So two last questions, we're really running out of time, and one of them uh, deals with the kind of scenario that you perceive would come about in case the 100 million are denied. If those are denied, uh, or that f those, those funds are denied, I don't see then, I think the Contras could continue in the hills for a long time, being an annoyance to the government, but they would not be able with the limited tools they have, they would not be able to impose the pressure that they must on the Sandinistas. Would the communists entrench themselves? The com and then the communists, with the, they've got $500 million worth of aid from the Soviet Union. They are laced with advisors and trainers and so forth from the communist bloc nations, from Cuba, uh, even from the, the PLO, and, and from Libya. And they have made it plain that they don't intend their communist revolution to stop at their borders. We have the documents that we seized, Cuban and Soviet documents that we seized on Grenada, in which they were telling their cohorts in Grenada that they had Cuba, they had now Nicaragua, they had Grenada at that time, and they were talking about their other targets in the Caribbean and in Central America. So it isn't just that it's going to be a Nicaragua. It's going to be the spreading of a communist base, an expansionist thing they're imposing on, on their neighbors. I had nine prime ministers from Caribbean nations just a few weeks ago come to me and tell me that we had to continue helping because Nicaragua was the greatest threat that had ever existed as far as their nine countries were concerned. Mr. President, or as they say in Spanish, Señor Presidente, muchas gracias. Well, muchas gracias to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, sir. Okay. Did I sell you? You definitely did, and you, I'll, let me tell you one thing, you didn't need to sell me. <laughs> I'm, I'm sold, and as I told Luis Acklin here, Whatever we can do for you in Temasi Debates and in SIN in general, we're at your oh, disposal, sir. Then in your whole broadcast, then tell those who are Americans, those Hispanic Americans, to call and write and wire their congressmen. Promise to do that. Tell them how to vote. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you.